So something pretty crazy happened in one of my more recent games of Dungeons and Dragons, and it looked a little something like this. Mixed with this. Well, it didn't look exactly like that, but it was pretty close. <laughs> and with Star Wars Episode Nine being only a few months old, as well as Season 7 of The Clone Wars being released just two days ago at the time of recording this video, I felt the need to scour through as much 5e material as I could to make one of my most desired builds ever. So welcome back to the Metamagic's channel. I am your Game Master, and today we're going to make a Jedi in 5e. Before we get started, if this is your first time here and you want to see many more character builds like this one, please feel free to hit the subscribe button. And if you like what you see in this video, please feel free to leave a like as well. It helps out a lot. So jumping right into the build, the first thing you need to decide is what race you're going to be. And for this build, you can be whatever race you want. If you're looking to make this character from a strictly roleplay perspective, you can pick whatever race you want. However, if you want to play a more powerful class, you probably want to pick a race that has some sort of intelligence bonus as well as strength or dexterity depending on depending on some factors that we're going to cover shortly now for your class you're going to be picking the fighter and for the purposes of simplicity we are going to avoid all multi-classing as for the subclass that you get to pick at level three you are going to want to pick eldritch knight eldritch knight gives you the ability to be very proficient with your lightsaber combat as well as your force powers for your stats this is where you need to make a decision on which of the two you want to be more proficient with your melee combat or your force abilities if you want to be more proficient with melee combat it's important that you put your highest stat at strength or dexterity if you want to be more proficient with your force abilities you would pick your intelligence stat as your highest stat and this is of course because the eldritch knight's spell casting ability stat is intelligence so going more specifically into stats if you want to play a melee focused jedi you would have your highest stat be your strength or dexterity followed by your intelligence and then your constitution if you want to be a more force proficient jedi then you would have your highest stat be your intelligence followed by your strength or dexterity and then your constitution a quick Quick note, when picking your attack stat, you should probably stick with dexterity as dexterity adds to armor class and Jedi typically use their evasiveness more than armor to avoid getting hit. Just a thought. You could actually interchange your second and third stat being constitution, just whatever you want to do with it. Just to make sure that your highest stat is what you want to be focusing most on. So now that you have your race, class, and stats all lined up, it's time to move on to your skills. Now you've probably noticed that almost all Jedi are proficient in athletics as well as acrobatics so if you are given the option to pick one or both of those skill proficiencies do so moving on to your more mentally focused skills you're looking for things like arcana insight and persuasion and if you want to throw in a little extra spice to your role play you can throw in religion if that's available now that your skills are done we can move on to equipment and unless your dm is the coolest dm ever and will give you the most important part of this build at level one you're going to need to make some changes starting with your armor now as i said before dexterity is going to be your primary source of defense so if you want to go full jedi you can skip the armor plating for some robes as for your weapon you're going to want to start off with the long sword and wield it with two hands as it will emulate what you can do later and what i mean by that is your primary objective as a fledgling jedi is going to be to find your weapon and luckily enough, in 5e, there is a very specific magic weapon that you're looking for, the Sunblade. The description of the Sunblade is as follows in the DMG. This item appears to be a longsword hilt. While grasping the hilt, you can use a bonus action to cause a blade of pure radiance to spring into existence or make the blade disappear. While the blade exists, this magic longsword has the finesse property. If you are proficient with short swords or long swords, you are proficient with the sunblade. You gain plus two bonus to attack and damage rolls made with this weapon, which deal radiant damage instead of slashing damage. When you hit an undead with it, the target takes an additional 1d8 radiant damage. The sword's luminous blade emits a bright light in a 15 foot radius and a dim light for an additional 15 foot radius. The light is sunlight. While the blade persists, you can use an action to expand or reduce its radius of bright and dim light by 5 feet each to a maximum of 30 feet or a minimum of 10 feet. So basically, it's a f***ing lightsaber. 
Now, it may seem obvious to many of you that no DM in their right mind would give players a plus two weapon at level one, which is why I have an idea as a DM for how I would run a quest to obtain said weapon at a low level. Those of you who have seen the Clone Wars animated series might remember the episode where Yoda takes the younglings to the hidden ice planet where they had to find their kyber crystals to forge their own lightsaber. I feel like as a DM, you could create some sort of creative quest arc around a similar idea to give your low-level Jedi a lightsaber pretty early on, without doing too much damage to the campaign, of course. Now that your skills, stats, and equipment have all been taken care of, it's time to move on to the final part of the build, your spells, or your force abilities. Now, unfortunately, Eldritch Knights learn spells at a drastically slower rate than other spellcasters, but you can make up for it in other ways. For example, at level 3, when you first pick your Eldritch Knight subclass, you immediately gain the ability to Weapon Bond. Weapon Bond essentially allows you to bond with a weapon, which essentially allows you to do this. Pretty cool, right? Now at level three, you're going to immediately gain access to three level one spells, two of which you can cast before you need to long rest. Your primary choices here are going to be Charm Person, Detect Magic, Jump, and Long Strider. These four spells are going to be your bread and butter, so be sure to make use of them when you can. At level seven, you gain access to two second level spell slots, and the best two to pick here would be Detect Thoughts. I sense a great deal of confusion in you, young Skywalker. There is much fear that clouds your judgment and suggestion these aren't the droids you're looking for these aren't the droids we're looking for now you do get access to both level three and level four spells later on as an eldritch knight however they come super late into character development as in levels 15 through 20 and 90 percent of campaigns don't make it past level 10. so it really helps that these two second level spells round out the build completely there are a few spells you could throw in from level 3 and 4 that could just add a slight bit of flavor, but they don't really thematically fit. There are, however, plenty of spells outside of 4th level that would thematically fit with a Jedi player character. However, all of those spells require you to multi-class into Wizard or Sorcerer, and that build is way more complicated than this one. So if you want to see a more complex build that requires multi-classing and books outside of the normal player's handbook, leave a comment down below. So that's it. By level 7, you will have a near-perfect Jedi Knight to save the galaxy, or whatever your D&D campaign is. If you found this video helpful, please feel free to leave a like. It helps out a lot. And if there is any specific character build that you want me to cover, please leave a comment down below or feel free to jump into my Twitch stream. I stream on weekends and some other weekdays. We can have a conversation on any character builds or all things D&D over there. Link to that in the description below. So good luck with your Jedi. Have fun. And until next time, happy gaming. Oh, he's about to die. Wait, is he still up there? Woo! There we go, baby! Finally! Let's go! Let's go!